What a uh, why? I don't know. I I speak it a little better, and it. Uh, gosh, damn it. So, speaking of Borada, I um, I was talking. Uh, was that yesterday or today? I don't remember which. Oh wait, no. This part was yesterday. So yesterday. I was, uh, chatting with some friends over the Facebook Messenger. Uh, first would be my, uh, my long-distance situation, and- Oh, son of a bitch. I got, uh, cupcakes. Hold on. And the cupcakes are out of the oven. That's what that's called. Uh, actually, I saw some, like, squeeze-and-bake batter for Lava Crunch Cakes, the Kroger-branded ones, and I picked those up at Kroger. Um, even though I had almost no food stamps money left until Thursday, Thursday. So, uh, by the time this uploads, it might already be Thursday, in which case it is not a food pantry Thursday for me. It is a game night. Yes, I'd mentioned Welsh and Wales. So, I know he's not completely out, so he is my situation in Wales, in one of the four cities of its size. Cause, I don't know, it's like, I'm, yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, I know, <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm a little difficult at times, and sometimes I overthink things, but yes, I was having a conversation with him yesterday, at the same time I was having a conversation with another friend of mine. I was having both of these conversations about books, and it was about books because, ah, uh, as some of you know, I recently, as in, uh, July, maybe early, no, it was early August, because I was still going through books all through July. So around, so the month of the solstices, yeah, solstices, so June and December, I like to go through all of my books and decide which ones I definitely want to keep for one reason or another, which ones I am sitting on for another six months while I decide if I really am going to read them or find some other reason to keep them, and then books that just seemed like a good idea at the time. Realistically speaking, I'm never going to read these, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, I bring this up because I have a problem. I have a problem. Um... To my credit, I recognize that it's a problem. So, I have been making out like a bandit with the free shelf at the library. In fact, um, yes. Now, not all of these were from the free shelf, which brings me to, up to the second conversation I had with another friend of mine. So, I was having a conversation yesterday as well with my friend Adrienne, and this was about cookbooks. So, I have sent Adrienne um, a couple of books. Uh, one is about um, the uh, the food culture of France and um, all of that. I initially picked that up for Isaac because he claims he's obsessed with all things French, but he's really not. He, he just likes to watch artsy movies and like, he, he, he didn't hate Amelie or the triplets of Belleville, and so yeah, like, I picked up a book for him from the free shelf at the library about, like, you know, fairly comprehensive, um, book about the food culture of France. He's not interested. I'm like, okay, so you're not obsessed with all things French. You know, I am. Sure, whatever, hon. Uh, but yeah, um, Adrian is, is indeed obsessed with all things French, and I know she's made some really good faith efforts to learn the French language. Um, she sings it really well, uh, but speaking is different. If you've, if you, like me, remember when, uh, Selena, oh uh, shit, I forget the rest of her name, but the, um, the Tejano singer from the early 90s, and then there was a biopic starring Jennifer Lopez, uh, about her, and so if you've at least seen the movie, and I have definitely seen the movie, uh, like many gringos, I was not really aware of her until she died because her murder was just, it was a huge thing. Um, plus, uh, she had just recorded a, uh, a crossover album, so Tejano music is usually performed in Spanish. Um, it's, uh, it, if you're unaware, it's, uh, um, Tex-Mex pop music. But yeah, she just recorded a, uh, a crossover album where that was mostly English language, and then she's murdered by the president of her fan club. So, then what happens? So, yes, Selena, 
Um, so Selena, she grew up in Texas. You know, she was, performed Tejano music. It would make sense that she would, you know, grow up in Texas. Uh, but uh, but she didn't grow up speaking Spanish. She grew up speaking English, and you know. English only, and she could sing in Spanish really well, but there's a scene with, um, name, name, what's his name? Ah, uh, crap, the guy, the guy. What's his name? You've never seen any of his movies. Um, Edward James Olmos, yes, he was playing her father, and he was, uh, he was explaining that, like, oh, no, well, Selena, she sings really good in Spanish, but speaking, not so much. This was, like, you know, the little scene depicting her first, um, interview with a uh, Mexican radio station or something. I don't know. So yeah, if you've at least seen that movie and you are not yourself a singer who sings in languages besides your native one, you know that, you, you would know that singing a language is different than speaking a language. So she's, she's really, really trying with learning French. So I also found this book uh, that I sent to her that is, um, ah, oh, crap. And I just... Um, looked up the pictures again to uh, share with my situation because we were talking about free books at the library and how I have a bit of a problem. But it's not a huge problem because I recognize that it's a bit of a problem. And two, um, I do re-gift and re-donate what only seemed like a good idea at the time. And I do this twice a year. But yes, so, um, so it's a book... And the subtitle is something like uh, the, the, the real li life French that you don't learn in classes. And it even has a chapter about how like, all the various like, common gestures used by the French when they talk, because apparently the French get really handsy when they talk. As do a lot of gays. So, let's go through the... Okay, this is the bag from yesterday. So yes, I, why was I bringing up Adrienne? Because at the library, like right next to the free shelf, there is the, uh, and this is the Ann Arbor library. There's the Friends of AADL, so Ann Arbor District Library, Friends of the Ann Arbor Library bookshop. So when you donate books to the Friends of the Ann Arbor District Library, uh, these, um, anything that they think they can get, um, up to five dollars for will go into the shop. But if it's been in the shop too long, or if they think they can't get any, you know, even a dollar for it, it'll go to the free shelf. So, um, and five dollars max. Most of the books in that little shop, you know, in there, which, like, shop hours at the library are only until six, usually, uh, while even the Ann Arbor District Library counter is open until nine. No, please don't ask. I, I don't, I don't. I'm happier for it. I, I'm, I'm sure there's some kind of space logic that they're employing there, but that's another story for another time. So, um, most of the books in the, uh, FAADL, uh, shop there are one dollar or two dollars. So let's back up to last week. Last week I was in there, and I saw two books that I really wanted. One uh, is titled Vegan on the Cheap. That was a dollar. It's just a cookbook. Uh, no, I'm not even full-time vegetarian. I'm semi-veg. I don't, just because I eat meat doesn't mean I eat it every day. Um, maybe twice a week I'll have meat. Hello! There are reasons for that. Um, if I forget to link a video in the description below, um, I have a thing. Uh, I made a video over a year ago explaining why I'm not vegan, and long story short, I've got food allergies, and I have a very small budget. Hi. Yes. And that budget is now half of what it used to be. So, uh, so yeah, last week I was in there. Uh, vegan on the Cheap. Uh, that was a cookbook for a dollar. And another one was called the French Market Cookbook, um, Vegetarian Dishes from My Parisian Kitchen, or some, I don't know, some kind of convoluted subtitle. But that just looked so goddamn interesting. And it was also a dollar, and I figured, okay, I'm really broke right now, but I can justify spending two dollars. Unfortunately, I did not have enough cash on me. I did not even have one dollar cash on me. It was on my card, but they don't do um, card transactions for under five dollars. And unfortunately, there was not another one dollar book and two dollar book, or three one dollar books that looked interesting enough to me at that 
day. And plus, I was like, okay, I can, I can definitely justify $2. I might be pushing it at $5 right now. Long story, this month's budget has been completely borked, so that's all you really need to know right now. So, I put them back, and I uh, took in a whole shit ton of bottle returns, uh, because this is Michigan, and so if it's a uh, carbonated beverage or... Um, uh, yeah, beer has some, like, carbonation. Not cider, though. Like, they don't, like, they've classified cider differently, so you don't get deposit back on bottles or cans of hard cider, but, you know, beer, soda, sparkling water, well, sparkling water is basically soda. Well, you pay a 10 cent deposit, and then you get a 10 cent deposit back when you return the bottles. So, because my dad was, um, he had a head injury when I was eight, and then again, he also hopped freights through most of the 60s because he was, uh, was a widower when he was 19. There's a story about that, and yes, I shared it. I've done a video about it. I should uh, link that in the description. If I forgot to, please feel free to yell at me in the comments so I can find it and show so, it. I took in a whole bunch of bottle returns, but yeah, I brought up my dad because I, at this point, I'm like, I'm just so goddamn broke. I have no sense of shame about, like, reaching into the uh, the trash bins in downtown Ann Arbor or downtown Ipsy and grabbing, like, the one Coca-Cola can. Or the, you, you collect enough of them and you got yourself a dollar. You get some more. You get two dollars. That is enough to get those two cookbooks. So, I had a lot more than that that I took in this just past weekend. Unfortunately, by the time I did that, because shit got busy and all of that, couldn't really do that until the weekend, even though I was last in there um, a week ago Monday. So, at this time, ten days ago. So, by the, by the time I went in there, the French market cookbook was gone. I really wanted that one. That was the one I was really interested in. Um, not just because it included uh, dairy cheese, which of course, you know, if you want it vegan, you can substitute a lot of it somehow, sometimes. Um, but because it had this recipe in there for basically a French guacamole, which really made me think of Adrienne, because uh, she's, she's also Latina, and, you know, she just has a lot of, um, French background in her as well. I think that's, like, the... She did a video about it, but, yeah, so I was just like, oh my gosh, this is hilarious. This is, like, basically a French-style guacamole. I remember what, I remember most of what was in it is, you know, your basic guacamole, so you get an, I think it wanted a yellow onion, um, avocados, of course, um, fresh Roma tomato, a little bit of garlic, uh, lemon juice instead of lime, but a lot of times you can substitute, and, uh... And what else? Um, and some herbs. Some kinds of herbs, you know, just for a bit more of a French flavor. And so I was just like, I was telling her about it. And so, yeah, it, it was not there. It was not there. But there were a whole lot of free books. And I did have a bit more than $2 in cash after all of the bottle returns. So let's go through my problem. <laughs> okay, so this was from the free shelf. And speaking of whales again, we have A Walk Through Whales by Anthony Bailey. And reading the cover flap, in A Walk Through Whales, Anthony Bailey makes his way by foot from Cardiff uh, in the south to Bangor in the very north of the country, leaving the outskirts of the capital with backpack and map. His route takes in both highland and lowland, mountain peak and coastal plain, high roads, and Roman roads, where he encounters not just nature and other hikers, but whatever a haphazard path th through Wales puts in his way. He passes through the valleys with their deserted coal mines, Brecon and the beautiful Usk Valley, Aberystwyth, where he meets several proponents of contemporary Welsh nationalism, <gasps> on to Snowdonia, Carnafor, and finally, Bangor, 
where he can walk no more. Stopping off in pubs and bed and breakfasts along the way, he gets to know school teachers and sheep shearers, retired miners and relocated Londoners. As he walks, he sketches these people and the absorbing landscape, his acute observations building into a portrait w which both reaches into the past and reveals just how Welshness presents itself today. Oh, £14.99 in UK only. Oh my gosh. So wait, why was this on the, uh, on the free shelf then? This was on the free shelf. It has a $1.99 sticker on it, but my guess is, yeah, it was probably from this, which is not a ADL bookshop. So I also picked up totally updated and expanded Dr. Atkins new Harbor carbohydrate gram counter. So this is just, it's just simple. It's got carbs and macro nutrients and shit. So that'll come in nifty. Uh, then, I don't know. I kind of grabbed this one with the intent of maybe reviewing it, but it might also turn into one of those seemed like a good idea at the time. Found goddesses, Asphalta to Viscera as revealed to Morgan Gray and Julia Penelope. What do you get when you mix the jaded and irrepressible humor of a wild lesbian linguist and the magical sensibilities of a radical lesbian witch who are making it in a strange world called Lincoln, Nebraska? It seemed like a good idea at the time. I might... It looks like a fairly light read, so... Sure. Ah, uh, then... This is one that I paid for. So, friends, two dollars, three plays by Noel Coward, because I'm apparently not enough of a gay stereotype yet. And here we have Vegan on the Cheap, one dollar. Robin Robertson, author of Vegan Planet. Uh, the ultimate vegan budget cookbook, easy recipes for delicious food that costs no more than two dollars per serving. Uh, okay, and here it says 50 cents to $2 per serving, so that could work. Okay, this is another cookbook. English with a difference, $2. Another cookbook. Uh, English with a difference is a unique collection of recipes devised by a talented young English chef, taking the best English ingredients but acknowledging the influences of foreign styles of cookery and the ready availability of imported ingredients, Stephen Wheeler has developed a fresh new approach to English cooking throughout the year. One of the reasons I picked this up is because it's a thing that really stood out to me, not just the fact that it's got a lot of um, traditional English cooking foods, but it's also got lists of like vegetables and fruits and when they're in season seasonal poultry and game and nuts and stuff so summer in a jar making pickles jams and more another dollar <laughs> ah i've been thinking of getting into um pickling and canning um I certainly have a lot enough time, especially when the weather starts getting cold. The issue, therefore, then is, um, will I have the um, the physical stamina, and will I have enough shit to make it worth canning? Now, this is also from the free shelf, the Toastmaster's treasure chest. This is just like, it's got quotes. It's got so many quotes. I imagine this is going to be one of those, seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, I'll look through it. Socialist Party of America, a history by David A. Shannon. Um, so, yeah, no ISBN, so this is definitely an older thing. Uh, cover art suggests mid to late 1960s. Uh, 1955, David A. Shannon, but first Quadrangle paperback edition, published 1967 by Quadrangle Books. All right, I I am, yeah, and I guessed mid to late 60s, so 67 would fit both of those descriptions, right? God damn, I'm good at this. <laughs> uh, the 19, in 1912, the Socialist Party of America pulled a 6% of the popular vote for the presidency. There were 33 socialist cities and towns, as well as many socialists in state legislatures and one in Congress. So, this is going to be 
nice, isn't it? Alright, now bag number two, because I have a serious problem. I mean, to be fair, it could be worse, I could be spending money on these, but, um, let's be honest, I am... Space is at a premium in this place. I live in an efficiency apartment. No, oh, these were just free newspapers. Ah, so let's see, the latest research, the latest breakthroughs, discovers the amazing healing powers of St. John's Wort! The Miracle Medicine. Treat depression, lose weight. I imagine there's going to be a lot of quackery in this, but I do I do know from experience that it is indeed really good for anxiety and seasonal affective disorder, which I have both. I'm only taking St. John's Wort seasonally, and I've got other things that do a little bit better for anxiety from the free shelf. Male homosexuality, a contemporary psychoanalytic perspective by Richard C. Friedman, M.D. Okay, we do have an ISBN looking at the cover design. I'm guessing 80s. Probably early 80s. Oh, 1988. Okay, well I said probably early, but yeah, definitely 80s. Uh, this book is the first to integrate recent psychobiological gender identity and family studies of sexual orientation with psychoanalytic developmental and clinical theory. Th this is going to be at least interesting. Seeing a, reading a, uh, oh gosh, 31 year old book about gayness. Ah, then we've got, ah, uh, I have another Al Franken book. And yes, I, I know about the scandal from earlier this year. I really don't think, yeah. Going by how old the incident was, I don't think it was necessarily appropriate that he needed to resign. He just needed to acknowledge that he did the bad thing and apologize to the woman in question. And, you know, I, I don't... Ugh... <sighs> Cancel culture is an ugly thing, but yeah, I've got the I've got the other Al Franken book, but this is uh, this is one that I did not have. So, oh, you know, lies and the lying liar to tell them a fair and balanced look at the right. Uh, and the other Franken book I've got is hardcover. And then I love Gore Vidal, so uh, when I saw this on the free shelf, I had to. Dreaming War, Blood for Oil, and the Cheney Bush Junta. So this is one of his nonfiction political um, books. Yeah, current events. Obviously Cheney Bush. Oh yeah, this is very recent. For a second there, I thought uh, I was thinking Bush Quail. <laughs> Drink to Yesterday. Yeah by Manning Coles, obviously a former library edition from some library or another. Uh, I think this was at Don Treader, because uh, it has an old pencil mark for a dollar. Uh, oh, yeah, 1941. Because it's 1941, it's not necessarily something that I would, uh, that I would uh, want to have just for the sake of having on basis that it's old, because my period, as far as all of that stuff, is uh, 20s and 30s, but I picked it up because I uh, I looked up the, um, I think, was it Goodreads? I don't know. I, I looked up somebody's review of it and figured, and this was mine to begin with, but I moved it from one bag to another. So, this is the last. This is the last of them. We have the play M. Butterfly by David Henry Huang, with an afterword by the playwright. So, I'm only reading the top paragraph of a lot of these blurbs here. Based upon a true story that stunned the world, M. Butterfly opens in the cramped prison cell where diplomat René Gallimard uh, is being held captive by the French government and by his own illusions in the darkness of his cell, he recalls a time when desire seemed to give him wings, a time when Song 
Le Ling, the beautiful Chinese diva, touched him with a love as vivid, as seductive, and as elusive as a butterfly. How could he have known then that his ideal woman was, in fact, a spy for the Chinese government and a man disguised as a woman? In a series of flashbacks, the diplomat relives the 20-year affair from the temptation to the seduction from its consummation to the scandal that ultimately consumed them both. So, yeah, I actually uh, remember when I... Oh, gosh. I was young, but I remember uh, reading... Uh, not reading. Uh, seeing 60 Minutes. The um, They had uh, both of the um, men that, this, that uh, inspired this play. So, who more cookbooks. So this one is not so much a cookbook. It is a reference book, the Clever Cook's Kitchen Handbook, uh, 5037. That's a very specific number. Ingenious hints, secrets, shortcuts, and solutions from prepping broccoli to dressing up a cake. Uh, so this was $2. Hardcover. It's really nifty looking. And this is probably not going to be one of those seemed like a good idea at the time things. I don't know why I just said that, because obviously it was a good idea. That's a very useful book. I don't know why it was donated. Oh, it does have over 900 recipes for some reason. Okay. Uh, and then the Great Book of Bread. And this has a lot of bread recipes in it from the British Isles. Ah, oh, gosh. Okay, so yes, I have a problem with free books or very, very inexpensive books. I just... I, at least I know I have a problem, and I have taken measures to bring the problem under control. So, all right, I'm going to eat my cold burger now, and hopefully my cupcakes have cooled. All right. Bats and kisses, um, as per usual, thumbs to denote whether or not you enjoyed this nonsense. Uh, hit uh, subscribe and the bell if you haven't, if you think more such nonsense will be entertaining enough to you, I guess. Mm, excuse me. And uh, if you really enjoyed this nonsense... Uh, and have more dollars than cents, I've got a PayPal tip jar, uh, Patreon, and Amazon wishlist in the description box. Amazon wishlist, due to my food stamps being all borked up right now, that, um, that does what? That, the wishlist in the description is gonna be for, like, household foods and stuff. Like, I've got a few, um, dry ingredients kits for breads, so I don't have to go rushing out to buy bread when I run out. I can just make some for a whole weekend and <laughs> uh, get me a case of almond milk or something, because that is breakfast. All right, take care and goodbye! And speaking of little free libraries, or donations, such as to the... Hi! Yes! He senses my burger, which is on the heel of the bread. Hi, kitty. Yes, I see you. You're cute. You're very cute. So, I am... Oh, oh gosh. Cat, you're in my way. Thank you. Please. Please. Go bug. Go bug one of the other two. Yes. Yes, go bug somebody else. There are two other mammals in this apartment that you can bug. Oh my gosh. This is going to be... This is going to be a thing, isn't it? Hi. Ugh. Kitty, please go. Please go. No, you can't have it. It's mine. I cooked it. <sighs> please move. Please move. Oh my gosh.